Uh, HK47 say, even though it's totally understandable the frustration this godforsaken club gives us, we can't as a fan base constantly switch up every week. One week we are incredible and going to win the lot. The next week we are shit and we will never amount to anything. People need to chill. <laughs> That's just the life of a football yeah. fan, unfortunately. But I think and as well, because um, every year, right, um, we... we because we haven't won a trophy and every year we, we want Tottenham to do something special we're not like we don't because it's been so long where we we basically haven't done anything really special like in since Levy's taken over as much as we got to Champions League final in terms of like winning something special right we haven't done that so every year we're always looking for that moment is this the year it's going to be a special year is this the moment like you know a title challenge or something really big so whenever we have like a result which like you're not expecting or a result that goes our way it's like that th that special thing is never going to happen this year. Look how rubbish we are, and there's a complete meltdown. And then whenever we win, have a good win, we're like we all get excited, like oh my god, is it actually going to be special this year? Is it actually going to be a special year? So there's no really no in between because we don't want to have like an average year or like a decent year. It's either either it's special or it's a failure. You know what I mean? So that's why it's so it's so like polarized because either it's either that special thing's not going to happen or it is going to happen. Yeah. And whenever we have like an average result or a poor result. That takes away from. It doesn't mean we can't have a decent year, but it means that special year is not going to happen. Mm. And so that's why it's like so polarized because we don't want decent. We don't want. We don't want good. We want special because we haven't had special, and that's the problem. You know. It's, you know what I mean? Yeah, I that's do know what you mean. That's why it's so polarized. Oliver Lengthorn says Timo Werner is the worst winger we've had in sixty, nearly seventeen years, which is his lifetime. Is as he the worst winger in 60 as years? Much as, as much as Incudu, I'm not... G. That's Yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> those are the first two that I had in my mind. Like As much as Werner... I, I'm not a big fan of Werner, uh, as you clearly know. But we have had worse wingers than Werner yeah. um, in the last 15, 16, 17 years, 100%. Is he in the bottom five? Probably. And apart from Nkudu and Ng, what other worst wingers would you say? Is Chadley better than Werner? Ooh. NASA. I think Chadley's probably a better player, to be honest. But like, probably, I, like Chadley in this system would not cut. He's way too no, slow. Yeah, right, he wouldn't, <laughs> he wouldn't. He wouldn't cut it out. Um, the only he had one good year. I remember that one year he was just banging in goals from yeah. like left, right, and center. But then he never really, never really uh, continued. It was like, well, that one year he got a goal at the Emirates. Um, yeah, and he shushed the crowd. I mean, that was great. In terms of other wingers that have been terrible for us, I mean, there must be like you know the early 2000s late 90s we must have had some dreadful wingers surely yeah I'm just trying to think Let's see Rule Fox was Rule Fox better than him Van is much better than Rule Fox <laughs> um. like during those huddle days we probably had some terrible wingers there's nowhere I can see just a list of Spurs wingers but Look, as much as as much as Timo Werner is not Simovic, the was he great, a winner? No, I think he was a midfielder. Mid, more attacking mid. We had like really old, like uh, set of midfield, like wingers. I'm trying to I'm trying to see here. Where's our squad? I mean, Rebrov was he a winger or a no? Rebrov was a striker. More of a striker. Johnny Jackson, he was a winger. He was. Terrible. Was he a winger? Yeah, he was a left winger, wasn't he? Rohan Ricketts, he was kind of a right winger. We didn't really have many wingers at this, this point. Anderton was great, but in his last like five years, he wasn't very good. Anderton, uh, Werner ain't uh, fit to lace Anderton's boots, no, mate. he's not. The quality that Anderton had yeah. in that foot of his, in that leg of his. But he just, with his last five years, he was always injured, he was slow. You almost want Timo's pace with, with Anderton's, with Anderton's yeah. quality. Then you got a real player. Uh, Reto Ziegler, more of a left back, I guess. Timothy Atuba, or again, more probably more of a left back. Yeah, he probably maybe is in the bottom five. Because <laughs> <laughs> I just think they've, uh, we've had a lack of wingers because we had Bell and Lennon for a while. Yeah. No one really coming in on them. I'm trying to think who else is there. Because I remember for a while we had that problem at left wing that like we always had to put Edgar Davids there and Timu Tainio there. Edgar Davids at left wing. Yeah, we played him a lot there. Steven Bergvine is a yeah, winger. Yeah, Bergvine. I mean, who's I better, Timo or Bergvine? I think probably Timo contributes more, doesn't he, than Bergvine? 
Bergvan got that goal against Man City. And Leicester. <laughs> the Leicester moment. The Leicester moment. I'll Is Timo ever going to provide a Leicester no, moment no, for probably us? Not. Probably not. <laughs> well, we probably Bergwijn. would have said Bergvan was never going to provide that moment <laughs> for us until he did. Yeah, I like, I'll probably go. I think I'd prefer Bergvan to be honest. Mm. So why did we sell him? Why did we sell him? Because he wanted to start regularly. There's never going to happen here. Next up is from Kong108 saying, The five-game streak was extremely overhyped as all teams were either small or completely out of form. And I actually agree with this. Overhyped in what way, though? What, what because everyone was being like, including me, uh, everyone was like, yeah, we've turned the corner now. We're a really good side. We've won five games in a row. Everyone was making so much about five games in a row that we've won. And yes, I know, it's, obviously, it's a good thing whoever you're playing against to win five games in a row, but... There was no barometer of how good we are winning those five games in a row because three of one of them was against championship opposition, two of them were against Europa League opposition, and those three games we should won every game every day of the week we should be winning those games. Uh, Brentford at home, uh, we should be winning that nine times out of ten as well. Uh, so the only game that was probably a bit impressive going to win was the game away at Man, Man United, and it's probably the worst Man United side we've ever seen. Uh, maybe, but it was a I mean, I side that a week later got away, draw away at Villa. So, you know, they're not always in that easy to play against. But yeah, I know they're they're not a great United side. They're not United sides of old, that's for sure. But look, five wins is five wins. I don't think anyone was saying we're going to win the league. Like I don't like, but like it just passed back on track. I think that's all, all people were saying. I don't know, overhyped, in what way? I mean, maybe, maybe if people were saying going overboard, saying like, you know. Spurs are going to challenge or something, then yeah. But I think it, the the run, especially considering we had inconsistent results, I think that run of wins did put us back on track and it was a big setback on Sunday. But I don't know. I don't think I overhyped it. Maybe not you particularly, but I do feel like there was a sense of overhypeness in the uh, in the fan base. But I think you've got to take all in context because it was the five wins off the back of the results being inconsistent, but the performance is still being strong, right? In before that. So then all of a sudden, the, perform the performances started matching results, and that's what people were getting was excited because about. Because we were I'm playing poor opposition, though. Maybe, but but you you could argue that. But also, um, at the end of the day, we were ma the performances were matching results because w we were just happy with the performances. You know what I mean? So we, we could see the, perform the results would turn at some point, and all of a sudden, in that five-game run, the, perform the results were matching the performances. Yeah, but then... The first time we come up against a decent side, we lose. Yeah, but we were two 0 up. It happened, and we have to learn from it. But it doesn't mean doesn't mean that you know. Hopefully, we haven't turned a corner. We'll have to wait and see after the international break. Uh, Hyung Min says, "And is too stubborn to actually mount a title challenge in this league when you're two 0 up away from home against a good team. You switch up your tactics and sit in to hold on to your lead rather than keeping your defenders on the halfway line." I don't think that was an issue though. Like, we didn't have a high line issue in that second half. We had a individual errors issue uh, where everyone just thought they'd won the game. I don't think it was a tactical issue in the second half. I think it was a mentality issue. I think mentality as well. I think we do have a bit of a problem with fatigue, especially at the start of second halves. It's been a clear, I think there's been a clear bit, a bit of an issue, even in games where we've won, where there's in that period there's a bit of a drop off, and we have to figure out why that happens. And we have to, I think there's got to be some um, tinkering or whatever by Ange, and there's a, I think there's a problem. Um, but I, do, I wouldn't necessarily, because imagine. There's how many games have we seen in the past with Tottenham where we've we've gone too up and we do have done that, sat back, and then we, we, we put ourselves under pressure and then people say, Oh, why do we sit back? You know, that's probably cost us the game. So I don't think it's wrong to just just keep try and keep your foot on their neck, right? And try and just kill the game in that way. But obviously I think when it comes to let's say in the in the seventieth, eightieth minute, right? And you're still and you're two nil up and then you're still doing still holding the high line and then and then you give up the game in that way, I probably would agree. But I don't think start of the second half, it's ne that's completely necessary to but do But we that. did drop deeper in the second half than we were in the first half anyway. We dro I don't think we did. I felt like we did. I think we were forced deeper. I don't think we dropped deeper. Maybe, maybe. But we were deeper. Yeah, but I don't think it was a, that was... Maybe a, it wasn't by design. Yeah, it wasn't by design. Yeah, it wasn't by design. Um, Norwegian Vikings as Spurs says, drop Romero and start Dragosheen against West Ham. If Son is still out, put a doggy at left wing. A doggy left wing? But Son isn't going to be out, though. So. I, don't know, I, I don't know about a doggy left wing. I don't know if he's, if he's going to be that player to like 
take people on in that position. I don't know. He might, he'll just bundle past them. Yeah, he could do that. But is he going to get goal contributions in that role? Maybe. I, yeah, mean, I don't see why not. So you think he can play left wing? I think if we're really struggling, he can play there. But you've got you've, we've got players that can play there. So I don't think there's need for a doggy to play there. In, in a, maybe I'd prefer Spence maybe to play at left wing than I'd prefer a doggy to. I'm just thinking how we play the ball. He's going to be left in that situation one on one with def- uh, with defenders. Could he get the beating of his man? Could he? I think work he can. Deliveries. I think he's got a good cross on him, and I think he can beat his man. Mm, maybe he could, maybe he could fill in there. I wouldn't want him to see him there over more than like a game, essentially. Mm. Maybe for a one-off game if we need him to do that. Yeah, but I don't know about, I don't know about him being a left winger. James Crabtree says he hasn't been the most likable along the way, but Daniel Levy is actually a good chairman who has slowly built a strong foundation for Spurs to thrive moving forward. Match day revenue, non-football events revenue, no personal loans from ownership to the club, no FFP issues, etc. Um, I don't know about that, man. I don't know about that. When you're looking at Daniel Levy, spoken about Daniel Levy so much over the past, but in my opinion, we're in this situation that we're in. Like this rebuild should have happened five years ago. Like, why Why the hell? What have we been doing for the last five years? That's all on Daniel Levy's watch, and that was all because of Daniel Levy. And yes, in recent times, he's made good steps to, in terms of regenerating the squad and bringing in a attacking philosophy uh, with Ange Postacoglu and regenerated the backroom staff and everything like that, which is steps in the right direction. But he's held us back more times than he's brought us forward, in my opinion. I think if you're looking for the whole history of his tenure, then I think there's a lot to criticise. Just look at the last five years. Yeah, I'm saying if you look at the history of his tenure, whatever the last five years, look at it, look at what he's done in the past. There's a number, there's a countless amount of things you can point to, so to, to say that he held us back from progressing at this point and that point, and he didn't invest and he made bad decisions. I all I agree with all of that, but what I would make the argument is right now where we where we're sitting right now. Uh, in the league and the, where we are in the project and, and where we are um, in terms of the squad and the management and and recruitment and transfers as of this squad of you know 24 tw- 25 season you know is the chairman a factor in holding us back as of right now i mean i look at the team right all of our players pretty i look pre- pretty much 1 to 11 majority of those players are like 30 million plus signings they're all like fairly expensive signings and he is, he's, he's, I think the recruitment's improved. I think he's got a manager who likes to play attacking football, the football we like to see. I would make the argument right now, like, as much as I've had my um, complaints and, 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 ang- and points to be angry about Levy before and, you know, all these different things about him holding us back, and I think they're completely valid, I just don't look at the team right now and I don't look at where we are and think that the way the club is run or the, or the way we've invested in the team is something that's holding us back right now. That's why I would make the argument. Yeah, but we, we should be a lot further on than we are at this moment that's in time. That's by the by. I agree. It's not with, by I, the by. No, it is by the by. I'm, I'm, that, that's not part of my argument. I agree with that. But that should be part of your argument. But my, my, no, but my argument is right now, as the team is right now, and the, where the, how the squad is built, and how much we've been investing recently, and, and the recruitment, and the, recruit, the state of the recruitment, and the management... Right now, this season, I don't see the ownership right now being being part of something that's holding us back. I mean, we did bring in Timo Werner on loan. Is that part of the ownership? Is that Ange? Is that both of it put together? I, I don't would argue know. That's Ange, but yeah. Um, we don't actually know, but from what we've heard from Johan Lang is that Daniel Levy actually has no say in in the players that are coming into this club at the moment, which is a positive step, definitely a positive step in the right direction. And I agree to a certain extent. I agree in a sense that since Ange has come in, we've made forward steps as opposed to in every other manager's tenure. It's just been backward steps. So I give him credit for that. But I need to see... I need to see this happening over a much longer stretch of time to to say Daniel Levy isn't holding us back, and that's just. I'm, the not, re- I'm not saying he's. I'm not saying he hasn't in the past, or maybe he still is. But what I'm saying is, what I'm seeing with my own eyes, right? How much this team we've built has cost, how much we are investing, how recruitment, how recruitment is now run, 
the management of ch choices he's picked and stuff like that. Like, I just don't see what... Um, I mean, yes, we could we spend more on... Like, could we go 100 million instead of 50 million on players or 60 million on players, maybe? But, like, I, just, I think, as I say, you go to 1 to 11, right? Like, Vicario was 70 million. Apart from Vicario, I think they're all pretty much very expensive signings, actually. Porro is 40 million. Romero is 40 million. Van der Ven's 40 million. A doggy was like 20, but obviously he's a good player. Ben Tancor and Basuma, there, you know, each of them were about 25, 30 million. Madison's 40 million. Kulisevsky's 30 I think million. Ben Tancor was like 15 million. 15 to 20 million, maybe. But he's, look, he's a good player. Solanke, 65 million. Brennan, 50 million. Sonny was 22 million, but obviously he's a very good player. I mean, look, whether you think those are smart players, piece of business or those are, those guys are worth the money is another question one point my point is could you build a team um where um, could you build a team capable of changing with that level of investment in those kind of players why not i think it just remains to be seen uh because i don't think we did enough in the summer just gone as much as you know we we did spend big fees on on particular players i don't i just don't think we did enough i don't think our forward line is strong enough still i think that We've got a gap in the midfield that we need to be filling and no left back replacement for destiny as well, which is that's um, not my point. That's no, my, my point isn't do we have enough in the squad? My point is the level of investment in all these players, whether you think they're, they're, they're worth the money or not, but you think about how much we spent on all these players, right? Yes, we could have instead of spending that 50 million on Brendan, we could have spent the 50 million on something else, but spending 50 million on a right winger that's like. Is that not enough investment on a right wing, if you know what I mean? Yeah, but it's not just about investment, is it? Well, isn't it's it? About, it's not just about investment. It's about taking the club to where the club needs to be. And yeah, you say you don't want to put in the, uh, the previous five years into your argument, but it has to be there because we've been held back for too long. And, I and, 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 and I like the direction. Like I said, I like the direction that we're going in. I'm... I think it's a positive step in the way that we're investing, uh, the, the amounts that we're spending. But we need to go out there and we need to buy the best in class in certain positions. And will we ever do that under Daniel Levy? I'm not too sure. I would argue, I don't, I, I'd argue you have, to, you have to buy the best. Do you, you have to, I don't know. I, I think other team, I, don't, I wouldn't necessarily say that's necessarily true. Because you look at man, people like City, like they've built a defense signing people like Akanji and Ake and like like they've got good players who are really good but when they signed them you wouldn't have said they were the best Kovacic when they signed him great player you wouldn't have said he was the best but they've they they they've managed to get very good players and obviously either make them better or whatever but you can build a team capable of challenging not without spending 100 million on all these players in my, in my opinion you can you can spend i thought i think 40 to 50 million Spending that kind of level, that amount of play, um, amount on on a, a, a number of players, does can put you in a position of challenging. Obviously, you have to spend it wisely, and you have to, and that's a different argument. But I'm saying my point is, the level of investment we've currently we're currently making in the team, is a good level of investment. And I don't think like the level of investment. I'm, I'm, and my point is right now anyway. I'm not talking about the past. I'm saying right now the level of investment we're putting in the team. I don't think is what's holding us back. But to really push on and to really fight at the top of the league, you need to make that level of investment that we're talking about. Arsenal, yeah, they were fighting for the league the year before, but since signing Declan Rice, they've become a much better side. Liverpool, we spoke about it before. They were doing well, but they, they went out and bought Alisson, Van Dijk and Fabinho and they were much better off for it. So we need to, we need to be... We, if, if we want to go and fight at the top of the league, we need to bring in this, these kind of players and, this, and make these kind of investments. And I just don't know if Daniel Levy is going to do that. We'll have to work, but clearly he's willing to spend 40, 50, 60 million pounds on players, mm -hmm. is my point. So if you're spending 65 million on players, like consistently, he's done it with Richarlison, 60 million. He did it with Solanke, he even did it with Ndombele, 60 million. So he's willing to put that investment, is my point. Like he's, he's showing- That's like kind of like the ceiling, isn't it? Are we ever going to go more than that? I don't know, but I don't, my point is, I don't think, I don't think like I don't sit here and think if we don't spend more than sixty million on a player, then we're never going to challenge. Like I think you sixty million is not a bad, is not a terrible ceiling. I feel like we go for those that kind of bracket of player forty to sixty million. Rarely sixty million. We've got Richarlison, you've got Undombele, and you've got Solanke, but I don't think we've ever 
that that's the only three players we spent in that ballpark mm-hmm. bigger, right? Everything else has been below that. So <laughs> when you're signing, we're, we're signing too many kids at the moment as well. And we needed players to come in in the summer that were here and now players. And apart from Solanke, which, other, which players did we bring in for the here and now? And when you're talking about... Ange kept saying we need to, you know, make the forward line. We need to improve the forward line massively. Apart from Solanke, did we really improve the forward line? Um, apart from Solanke, did we really improve the forward line? Um, no, probably not the front three. And yes, we could have done more. I'm not saying that, but I'm just, I'm, I'm not, I'm just saying um, the level of investment in the team how much we're spending on players and how many how, how many times we're spending big money on players, I don't think that's holding us back at the moment. Yes, you could look at the squad, This there's a hole there, there's a hole here, 100%. And we, I'm not saying we don't need more or we're the perfect team. I'm just saying the level of investment should be adequate for us to really kick on and challenge. Yeah, but we're not kicking on and challenging. But that's not due to the level of investment. It might not be to the level of money that we're spending, but it's due to the maybe the where they're at in their careers of players that we're signing, like Archie Gray, Lucas Bergvall. Yeah, they're going to be big players for us in the future, but are they going to bridge that gap right here, right now? Probably not. Maybe not, but that's a smart thing to do. We, you need to you gain need both, level. though, don't you? And, we, and we, do we not have good players for the here and now? Not to... You know, Ange says he wants to fight for the title. We don't have that. No, but we still have good players. Yeah, but we don't have players that can... we got players for just about a top four challenge. We don't have anything further than that. Probably not, but... We, we, we never expected that this season. But if you're spending the, mo- the amount of money that we're spending, surely you'd expect to be starting a title challenge and with a, And soon. with a couple more £50 million players, could we not do that? It depends who they are. Right, but I'm saying, if it depends who they are, but I'm not saying, it's, I'm saying with that level of investment, a couple of £50 million, if they're the right players, if, if they cost a couple of £50 million, that could that could maybe make the difference. Obviously, it depends who they are. But I'm saying my point is the level of investment, not what who they're signing or anything. My point is the level of investment the club the owners are putting into the club right now is that holding us back? I'm saying the money they're putting in, how much we're spending on players. I don't think that's currently holding us back. That's my point. Not about are they signing the right players, all this kind of stuff. I'm saying the current level of money they're putting in. I don't think that that issue is holding us back right now. But isn't it so much more than that as opposed to just how much money that they're putting into the club? Yes, and that's and those things have been things we complained about, but I think it was well, those things, recruitment, um, football management, all these things, they're also putting, putting, are put into place with Man and Lange and all these different things. And the, recru- the recruitment, I think, has been much improved. And we're signing a lot of younger players. It's something, another thing we've complained about in the past, you know, not looking for the future, not planning for the future with, with all these young players. And, but and, it feels and like it's either good. one way, like wholeheartedly one way or wholeheartedly one way. Like, why can't we have, like, a really good mix? And I know we, we've got a little bit of a mix right now where we bring in Solanke, which is ready for the here and now, but every other player we brought in in the summer were 18-year-old, 19-year-olds. Like, we needed, we needed to bring in stuff much more for the here and now than we actually did. And I think, I don't know whether it's, whether it's a remit from Levy or from Lang or from Ange. I don't know who it is, but... I don't think it was good enough and we need to kick on. We need to kick on massively and bring in better quality in this football club.